stick around and find out how a four-year-old kid started welding and ends up making knives today. That would be me. Back in 1893, now back when I was four years old, I uh, started messing around out in the shop. My dad had a construction business and started dragging a stick across a steel stick welder and just started melting rod, just making sparks. Kind of thought it was pretty cool. Didn't have a lot of restraints when I was a kid. Dad just let me loose in the shop. So I started doing stuff like that, working on heavy equipment. By the time I was 10, I was pretty much on payroll, welding teeth on buckets and welding up grousers on dozer tracks and uh, truck rollers on the dozers and stuff like that. I did a lot of stick, got into wire feed, did dirt construction all the way through up into my 20s uh, with my dad and for other people too. I uh, worked in a fab shop, welding, uh, did that for a couple of years. Started doing, uh, moved to Missouri, started doing construction, got into remodeling, did custom homes, uh, some medium grade and some high end, uh, just south of a million dollar projects or a million. Some of them were a million, million change, but uh, built some pretty nice, fun, big houses and uh, had a lot of architectural cool stuff on the inside. Did a lot of stuff for ourselves. Water fountains in the house, in the tub, stone tubs and crazy stuff like that. Well, I was in construction about 20 years or so. Dad was a cabinet maker, so we did a lot of, a lot of construction and fine cabinetry work as a kid growing up on the houses we lived in. So. Didn't really like the fine stuff, but I did it. Fine woodworking, so got into construction. Was good, enjoyed it. Uh, small crew, a lot of quality control. Didn't ever get big at all, enjoyed it. Wood inlay in stone, stone inlay in, in wood on floors, backsplashes, arches, cathedrals, trays, all that. Got out of construction because uh, just uh, the impact on me, the residual impact day after day and year after year kind of wearing on me a little bit. I got a lot left in me though. So I started a junk removal business and uh, was gonna go citywide than statewide and just go big, but it would have been less, a lot less manual labor, a lot more brain labor. All the kids got together one day after we launched that and said, uh, hey dad, we're not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna go in the uh, knife business together. We did. I let the junk removal business go, construction go, quit taking jobs, and started in the knife industry with the, with the kids. Kyle's been doing it for 14 years at that point. And this was just about six months ago, five, five months. I was doing a lot of maintenance and working on some knives in the beginning, a knife, uh, maintenance, did uh, jewelry for a while, and then we full blown got into chef's knives a couple months back, so I am probably two, two, maybe three months into Chef's Knives, just intense with oversight of the Master Bladesmith, uh, my son. That's where we're at today, trying to work our way through it as a family and make awesome, fun, art, creative knives for our clients to enjoy. When they go into the kitchen, we want to give a product that they can enjoy using and it will inspire them to be more creative in their work, whether it's professional or it's uh, just to kind of chilling, kicking back in the kitchen. The scariness of it, I don't think I'm smart enough to be scared. Uh, Christ reigns and rules over my affairs and I think we were given liberty to, to pick and choose what we want to do in life. So um, the opportunity was definitely presented. There was nothing obvious that was slamming the door shut on the opportunity. So. I think we have a lot of liberties to do different things in our lives. It was it was put on our hearts as a individually and as a family to do this together. Uh, we're pretty resourceful. If if it if for some reason it didn't work, we're always flexible to pick up stuff and do something else. We got a lot of skill in our family. Everybody does, and we pursued things that we enjoyed, not pursue things because we had to make money. Uh, we had that liberty because we knew a lot of, a lot or a little, little or a lot of hard work would fix any financial situation. We've never been scared of doing something little out of the box. We've, that's kind of our MO in life. We've done 
a lot of odd things that other people haven't done traditionally. I don't know, never, never was worried or concerned about having work or a job to produce revenue. So it wasn't scary per se on the financial end of it. It's, it is now that we're into it. It's a little, it's like not scary, but like, ah, we gotta keep putting product out. We gotta, you know, keep looking for clients and more clients and satisfying the clients we got and looking for more. Mostly not too scary. Just the, the scariest part on my end is learning a new skill. Uh, this is, I'm used to working with 300 or 500 thousandths, which is a three eighths of an inch to half inch in my industry. Now I'm down to uh, one ten thousandths of an inch on this and that. So it's my world's changed a little bit on that. It's, that was outside my pain threshold years back. Now it's becoming part of my life, and I'm, I tolerate it and I, I do it. Now I'm learning to do it well on the fine details. Uh, I was a chainsaw, sledgehammer kind of guy over the years with things. I did a lot of inlay in homes, custom inlay. It was very detailed. I've actually shimmed uh, stone around a hearth on a fireplace. I shimmed this uh, green marble. It was beautiful. I uh, didn't want it to climb. They wanted to grow out, but he bought these small pieces. So I actually shimmed the marble with uh, three different types of razor blades so that the seams would be perfectly lined up. Uh, and the razor blade was so thin that it just gave you a little bit of wiggle room that wouldn't show up to the eye. Um, so I've, I've done that and enjoyed it and did it well, but now I gotta do it every day like that. That's the scariest part for me is learning the new skill, not having your muscle memory and your brain knowing the next process perfectly and you're just gonna fall into it. I gotta work at it to get the next process. Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And you've gotta know the process, so, to make your work look really sweet and clean. So it's a little frustrating, a little challenging for me to know that exact next process when I haven't quite mastered it yet. Kyle's really patient with that. He gives me a lot of second chances over and over and over again. Uh, when I don't get it memorized, right, I keep asking the same question over and over. I enjoy that about working with my crew here. I will do it. I mean, I'm, I'm not scared. It will get done. That's, I'm not worried about that. It's just how much time am I going to burn up getting to it? And how consistent can I be on that particular product, on that particular process for the clients? They want consistency, the same, same, same. I have an awesome crew around me, my kids. The, uh, they make they make me look good on film, 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 film. Uh, they make they make me give me no, uh, they make they make me look good. Good yeah. on film, 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 film. Dum, 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 dum. My wife encourages me. Kyle encourages me. I got it. I got. It. I'm surrounded with really neat people that love me. Hanging with crew daily and watching them grow and mature in business and in life and family, that rocks. It's challenging though. We, we have challenging moments amongst ourselves daily, from moment to moment sometimes, but we work it out. Thanks for listening to my story and some of my background. Give me a comment below and let me know about some of the stuff you guys have been through in your journey to where you are today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.